So today I'm going to be taking a look at a watch I've wanted for quite some time and it is the SBGA407 otherwise known as the Skyflake or the Blue Snowflake. So it's a pretty cool watch and let's get into the review. So we're going to have a diameter of 40 millimeters, a lug to lug of 48.1, a height of 13 and a lug width of 19 millimeters. So some other general specifications for the watch, we're going to have a sapphire crystal on the front and back. Uh, as you can see here, we do have a, an exhibition case back and you can kind of tell but we have that ghosted Grand Seiko logo similar to what I had on the SBG W231 I reviewed a couple weeks ago. Beating in this Grand Seiko, we have the 9R65 spring drive caliber. Uh, it's going to have a 72 hour power reserve, an accuracy of give or take plus or minus one second a day. Currently I'm getting around 0.2 seconds a day, so pretty accurate. We also have 100 meters of water resistance, although it is not a screw down crown. And one thing I forgot to mention is there is an AR coating applied to the underside of the crystal. So moving on to the dial of this watch, and this will be one of the main reasons you're looking at this SPGA 407 Blue Snowflake, or really any Grand Seiko in general. And as we can see here, we have this beautiful blue, ice blue, sky blue, whatever you want to call it, coloration to the classic snowflake dial from Grand Seiko. And in my personal opinion, having seen both in hand, uh, having tried both on, having owned each for a little while, I do think the blue not only is a little more interesting than the plain white dial, but it also allows the texture to be a little bit more pronounced, a little more prominent, which I do like personally. Uh, one thing I think people think is that the snowflake texture is a little more defined than it truly is. Uh, at certain angles, like off axis here, you can really just see the texturing, the graining, uh, the peaks and valleys to the dial there. But at a lot of lights, at certain angles, uh, at distances further from the wrist, it does give you a faint idea of there being a texture, but really it just kind of blends into the dial and you just get this beautiful blue coloration, which I don't think is bad at all. I just think that it is a little bit less textured than some people give it credit for being. Looking a little more of the general design of the watch, this is part of Grand Seiko's Elegance Collection, so everything is going to be a little bit more dressy leaning. As we can see, we have here all these very thin uh, rectangles for the hour markers, a double baton at 12 there, and classic Grand Seiko sword style hands sharp enough to, you know, cut whatever food you need to with it. We can see there a nice little attention to detail. We actually have a center cap stack there, or a center stack cap which is pretty nice. I mean, you don't see a lot of companies doing it either by choice or because it's kind of a step not many people pay attention to, but when it is done, it does give a very much clean design to the watch itself. As you can see, we have a very simple minutes track on the outside uh, printed in black. We have very, very minimal text on the dial, which I really do appreciate. It's just a simple Grand Seiko and spring drive. They didn't add any kind of water resistance. They didn't add any reference number or nickname for the watch which is awesome in my opinion but some point of contention for people will be the uh, power reserve meter here personally I think overall it just ends up blending into the dial and the overall design but I guess how some people would say it ruins the symmetry of the watch but I think once getting it in person and on wrist it just kind of becomes part of what makes it the Grand Seiko and looking at the power reserve just in general it is beautifully detailed. It has a nice fine kind of radial pattern in the inner portion here and a more defined like deep grain sunburst on the outside. There's even metal applied indices there. Even this hour, well not even hour hand, but power reserve hand has a cap to it. So you can just really see anywhere attention to detail could have been paid, it was paid on this watch. And I just do really appreciate that. I think it all comes together to create a beautiful package. So zooming in here with the watch, and you can just really see how detailed and interesting that dial texture really is. There's just so much dimensionality to it, just depending on how the light hits it, what angle you're looking at it at, um, what kind of colors just come out to play depending on the lighting situation. As you can see, once the lighting hits that area more, these kind of brighter white tones come out, or it's like silverish white tones. So it really is a dynamic dial that is going to be kind of different under different lighting situations which definitely keeps your interest. Overall you can just see how well the small things are done. The Grand Seiko text there perfectly laid into the dial. Um, I don't know if it's printed or really how it's put on there. It looks almost like it's uh, printed or painted on in a way. 
uh, obviously not applied like that Grand Seiko logo is there, but there is no imperfection. It, it is perfectly well done. You can see the perfect mirror polish applied to every one of those uh, markers there. And one of my favorite parts is just how you can see the seconds hand reflected in just about everything. You can see it moving in the polished surfaces of the hands there um, once it gets a little bit better of an angle. Taking a closer look at the power reserve, and again, you can just see how detailed that is for something that's just so small, so kind of out of the regular point of view. It has that beautiful graining, radial graining coming out from the base of the hand there. Beautiful kind of, I believe, metal applied kind of divider there between the inner and outer portion of the hand. And at this magnification, you can see better just how rich and vibrant and blue that actual seconds hand is. Obviously, it depends on the light, but it, the way it just plays, going from a crazy black to this really bright and just shiny blue, I mean, heat-tempered steel is just something different. One last note I'd like to make is just how beautifully done this kind of polish on the hands is. It is so mere polished in every aspect that at some angles, it looks like it almost is brushed in the areas. It will reflect so perfectly. You should be able to see the underside of the seconds hand coming gliding along and that's just a ridiculous amount of mirror polish happening lovely so moving on to the case of the watch it is simplicity done the grand sake away it is all polished but it is all zeratsu polished so you have a nice perfect mirror finishing everywhere uh, as you can see with the lugs there's this beautiful kind of chamfer and then actual cut in which almost thins out the lugs visually and i mean just realistically and the way that the light plays, a lot of the times when I'll be wearing the watch, it'll almost look like the tops of the lugs have a brushed finishing to them or some other type of finishing just because it goes very dark when the chamfer goes very, very bright and shiny. So it really makes it look like two different finishings. They interact really awesomely together. Here, although the watch is around 13 millimeters thick, I think it wears its thickness really, really well. Overall, the mid case isn't too chunky. The Crystal has a slight dome or really a slight box to it, so that adds to the height a little bit. The lugs actually have a pretty nice curve down as well as just being a relatively short lug to lug distance. So overall, I think it wears pretty well on the wrist. One thing I'll note is we do have drilled lug holes here, which I love to see on pretty much any watch. It just makes strap changing a lot easier. And I don't really think it takes away from the looks of the watch at all. If it'll focus there, you can see we have a Grand Seiko signed crown. I think the crown is a pretty good size. It isn't too large by any means. Uh, sometimes I guess if you're just dedicatedly turning the crown, it isn't the most easy to grip. Uh, it could be knurled more, but overall it's never had a problem winding it. Again, you also have an automatic rotor, so that's not too much of an issue. Moving on to the case back, we have a very classic just Grand Seiko striping, some gold lettering there, uh, a nice blue emblazoned Grand Seiko on the rotor there, which I do really like. I mean. The Grand Seiko Blue is a really nice shade and I love any incorporation of it. As you can see there, the ghosted Grand Seiko Lion logo there, which I think is the perfect execution of a case back logo. And a nice little cutout there to show the beating of that continuous glide wheel. Really, really nice. And one other point to note, and something I haven't really seen a lot of reviewers talk about, is the actual movement architecture of this spring drive is actually meant to be reminiscent of Mount Iwate. So we actually have the mountain ridge right here in this little cutout of the bridge. And this little jewel right here is kind of meant to represent the rising mountain uh, going over the peak of Mount Iwate. And if we move the rotor here, there's actually two cutouts here and here, which actually mimic the exact positions of lakes that fall under Mount Iwate. So it's just all these little details that otherwise you wouldn't know and otherwise you know, the normal person wouldn't even care about. But Grand Seiko has taken the extra innovation, the extra time, and the extra development to make it not only beautiful, but for it to hold a story. And then really quickly, we have a very dark blue alligator strap with dark blue matching stitching. This is the stock Grand Seiko strap, unfortunately in 19 millimeters. It does come with a nice deployant buckle, which you can obviously use on any other watches. And it is a pretty good strap. It's not the most comfortable strap I've ever worn, uh, but also alligator isn't the most comfortable leather I've ever worn either. 
Overall, the dark blue alligator does serve its purpose. I do think it kind of makes it lean a little more dressy than I think this watch kind of deserves to be. I think when you play around with other straps, you can make it much more casual and much more versatile. So moving on to how the watch wears, earlier I was wearing my Seiko Presage Mockingbird here. So here we have the watch on my 6.5 inch wrist and I think you can tell that pretty constrained lug to lug length makes the watch wear pretty well within the bounds of my wrist. It by no means is too large. I think overall it ends up sitting pretty well. It is on the larger size so it isn't really that much of a dedicated dressy watch unless you have very large wrists or you're just okay with very large sizes. Again, I'm a little bit more traditional wanting my dress watches to be around 38, 36, even 34 if I can get it. So. Although this is a little bit outside my normal dress watch range, I do wear dress watches very casually most of the time, so it works perfectly in that situation. As you can see there, the Grand Seiko really does just wear pretty well into the wrist. Uh, when there's flexion, there is really no digging or pulling or just any uncomfortable nature about the wearing of this watch. I think it looks good on wrist, it fits well on wrist, I enjoy wearing the watch. Overall, I don't really enjoy wearing it on the strap because again, it's a little long. And also, I just don't personally love the way the alligator both feels on my skin as well as just looks on the watch. Side note I will take is the fact that these deployment buckles a lot of the time when they come stock from Grand Seiko will have the shorter end on the bottom and the longer end on the top, which is opposite of what I have here. This is the more traditional way of seeing the extra uh, length on the top side of the watch. But the reason that Grand Seiko does it quote unquote flipped is the basically the way a deployment works, or at least the way Grand Seiko's deployment works, is if it is in the quote unquote flipped orientation, it will function and swing out in the exact same orientation a bracelet would. So it kind of has that same mechanical feel, um, same muscle memory that would be associated with putting on and off a bracelet watch. So when it's flipped around to the more traditional like Tang style orientation, it does kind of fly in the face a little bit of that regular mechanical motion of putting on and off a watch bracelet, but I don't really like the extra tang sticking out on the uh, bottom side of the watch, so I flipped it around. So looking at some other straps, this is a beautiful kind of what they call, it, I believe, camel suede from BNR Bands. I think this very light brownish color, tan color, plays really well off the blue coloration of the dial. And just to correct myself from before, this is actually a new buck strap from BNR Bands, not suede. Slightly different uh, way of working the leather, but I think the strap just works perfectly. The white tones of the strap match the subtle white tones in the dial and the date window. And yeah, it's a pretty good combo. So here we have a really nice blue leather strap from Vario. It has this kind of pseudo suede, almost kind of like rough cut leather look to it. These are so far only prototype straps. Ivan was kind enough to send me a couple samples to play around with. Uh, they should be really soon though. And I think this really, really complements the watch really well. It goes a little better in my opinion than the Alligator. It makes it a little bit more casual than the Alligator. And I think the dark blue just plays off with the dark blue of the second hand as well. And there you have a look of that strap on the wrist. This is one of my favorite combos, just how the way the dark blue plays with the other blues on the dial. So this is one of, if not the most cool combo I found for this watch. This is the Oxford Chevron strap from Crown & Buckle. I think the tones of the strap just go really well with the dial. Uh, the kind of one piece nature of the strap makes it very, very casual and honestly helps it wear better on those with smaller wrists. And I just think it works really, really, really well. And last but not least, what would this channel be if I didn't put an expensive watch on a silicone strap? I think the Barton Elite silicone here pairs with the watch really nicely. The white just makes it a very fun, almost summery kind of feel to the watch. As you can see, it kind of just makes the watch pop a little bit more. Wears really nicely, wears really comfortably, adds a nice kind of subtle texture as well. And yeah, I just really like the look of it. So going on to pros and cons, and for me, one of the biggest pros for this watch is basically the dial. And kind of like bouncing off the dial, the originality of the watch in general. And for me, the snowflake texture is awesome. Again, sometimes you have to appreciate it more on a macro level, but even at a regular you know, eyeball vision, it still is gorgeous. It still looks amazing. It still catches the light awesomely. The way that the different shades of blue plays on the dial, the, the blue of the dial, the blue of the seconds hand, the blue of the power reserve meter, it all comes together to create something that's 
really just beautiful on wrist and again yeah the originality of the watch it is Grand Seiko through and through it does not look like a Rolex it does not look like an Omega it does not look like anything other than Grand Seiko it has its own design language its own feeling its own dimensions its own personality to it and I like that it just is unashamedly a Japanese luxury product I mean, other pro for me is the movement having spring drive personally I love it I know some people are kind of on the fence about it being a quartz movement but to me it really is not a quartz movement it just has a quartz oscillator that helps it keep more accurate time and yeah the sweep, the sweeping seconds hand the crazy good accuracy it just it is an awesome movement to have and last but not least Zerasu finishing is a really big pro for me again like I said in my last Grand Seiko video if you don't get Zerasu if you've seen Grand Seiko in person and it didn't blow you away that's completely fine it may not be something that you care about or it may not be something that stood out that much to you but in my daily day usage um, in comparing it to my other watches in my collection there is a big difference in the way Grand Seiko shines in the way the metal feels and the way it reflects light and grabs color and just that's just the way it looks it's it is awesome to just look at and get lost in and walk under a shaded tree and just see how it captures all these reflections so yeah Zeratsu is a really big plus for me so moving on to cons of this watch uh, one of the nitpicky points for me would be sizing at 40 millimeters it is a great crowd pleaser size but for me again this is a dressier styling watch I would have loved to see it at 38 maybe even 37 it would have fit amazingly it could have even more leaned into its dressy nature but again Seiko cases wear pretty well this watch does wear pretty well and I don't think it's oversized at 40 millimeters another kind of point that's not necessarily a con for me but I can see it being a con for other people is how subtle the texture is uh, like I said compared to the regular snowflake I think the blue is brings out the texture a little bit more but even still it is not something like uh, tapestry dial from AP or something that's just like very in your face you can see the texture you can see very clearly the work that went into it in a way and yes at certain angles and certain lightings you can see the texture but again at those far away angles you may not really be able to tell and that may be a downside for some people and really my only other con is the fact that it has 19 millimeter lugs I don't really understand why so many luxury companies go for like 19 and 21 millimeters is it because they just don't want people putting aftermarket straps on? Is it just because they're mean? Like, I don't, I don't understand. Uh, it's, it's nice because we're getting a lot of manufacturers doing 19 millimeter lugs. Vario, like I showed you, is coming out with a whole line of like Nubuck slash suede-ish looking straps. So those will be in 19. That'll fit 19 millimeter watches really well. But again, the same breadth of selection is not there that 20 millimeter straps have. And it'd be nice to see a watch at, from a luxury brand at 20 millimeters. So summing up my thoughts on the watch and again as I said in the beginning this is a watch I've wanted for a very long time. Basically the day it came out I was like I need this watch and finally I have it. And I'm sure some of that slight bias, some of that giddiness about owning this watch came through in the review and even from an objective standpoint I do think this is one of the best values in the watch industry at least in like the luxury segment at this time for five thousand eight hundred dollars you get something that compares to maybe an entry-level Rolex or a little bit more in the Omega catalog but even still it, it punches a good amount above its weight class it's hand finished it has a gorgeous gorgeous texture dial it has one of the most advanced movements if we're not talking quartz even though it's kind of a quartz but you know one of the most advanced movements out there for a watch unparalleled accuracy three days of power reserve it is an awesome watch and if you've been considering a Grand Seiko, if you've been considering this Grand Seiko, I don't think you'll be disappointed at all. It is awesome to own. It is a piece of art for your wrist and at you know this price point we're not buying watches to tell the time. We're buying watches because we love them, because they look amazing, because they tell a beautiful story, and they connect with us and this watch has a lot of potential to do that. So hope you got something from the video. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in another one.